Hi and welcome back to a new video and since we are able to show this video to you it means that the 12900K is finally here, there is no more NDA and we can talk about this specific CPU. The time filming this video is early October for me right now and I've just spent like weeks of testing and especially doing some DDR4 versus DDR5 comparisons and I just tested a different memory stick and when I figured out that this mainboard configuration with the C690 Apex can boot successfully, I decided it's maybe good to also mount the AIO while the system was still running. I was maybe a bit lazy to switch it off. And then maybe, just maybe, I dropped a screw of the AIO mounting kit on the mainboard and this maybe killed my 12900K. Oops. Well, <sighs> Luckily, it's easier for me to organize additional 12900Ks than organizing another C690 Apex. So I'm happy that my mainboard is still alive and um, kind of sucks that the 12900K is dead, especially just because I was just being stupid and lazy. It's like my own fault. And considering that, I mean, we're do doing so much crazy stuff with the CPUs, extreme overclocking and everything, and usually nothing dies, and then I'm just dropping a screw on the mainboard. Anyway. It's also a good instance because we can do some further analysis on just the physical appearance of the CPU. We will check out what changed compared to like an 11900K for example. We will also do the lidding in today's video because I mean I couldn't um, tell so far what the risk is or what kind of risk is involved uh, the lidding at 12900K simply because I couldn't take a look un underneath the lid so far. And usually if your CPU is alive and there is a risk of like taking off some SND caps or anything that could damage the CPU, then it's maybe not a good idea to do this process that early. But since the CPU is dead anyway, no more risk. And yeah, we will build a prototype delete diamate today to delete the CPU and also check out what's different. We are already in the process of making our new delete diamate. That's the first part. It's like a cover for sitting on top. CPU will sit underneath with like a slider underneath. We're just going to make like a very first prototype part. It's just purely functional, no like nothing optimized for visuals or whatever. We're just going to focus and see if it even makes sense to delete these CPUs or not. And yeah, could be that we're even breaking the CPUs directly. We'll find out. And the main part of the delete diamond will be milled out of this aluminium piece. The general shape will be pretty much identical to delete diamond too. Unfortunately, this aluminium piece is a bit uneven which leads to the fact that it's not sticking so well on our vacuum table. So we first have to mill like 0.5 millimeter or something to make sure it's even and then stick it to the vacuum table. We're making some very good progress right here. The principle will be exactly the same as with Delete Diamond 2 as I said before and we will just put the CPU like right in here. It will sit very firm. Then the screw from the front. We will have a slider sitting inside here and the slider will be pulled over the CPU PCB and then pushing on the IHS itself and this way delete the CPU, at least in theory. So we still have to manufacture the slider itself, but first I think we will take a close look at the CPU because there are some very interesting components and also looking at the back, you can already see some patterns. So maybe we check out the CPU first in detail. I'm pretty sure you all know by now that the CPUs are not coming in a square shape anymore like they used to with the previous like three, four, five generations. It's more like a rectangle. And that's also the reason why the previous Delete Diamates will not work anymore, simply because the PCB shape of the CPU changed. On the bottom left, we have four SMD caps or resistors, not sure if it's any of those two. And on the bottom right, we also have three more SMD components, which will limit our deleting action simply because we cannot push it downwards, we always have to push it upwards. Pushing it down could be possible judging by the SMDs on the left side, but on the bottom right, there's simply not enough space. Also keeping in mind that this CPU is 99% chance soldered, which 
also means that you need more force and more movement to be able to delete it. You're not only just loosening the glue underneath, but also the indium which is sitting underneath. Aside from that, we have a lot of like testing, probing points, top left, bottom right. That's the QR code for scanning the CPU um, serial number. And also on top, we have a lot more of those probing points than it used to be. If you look at the back of the CPU, I think this has also been leaked already in some sort of news post, I'm not sure. At least I saw some pictures regarding this. But there is, it looks like some yeah, weird shapes. You can see especially on the bottom right, like some weird patterns. Now if you move the direction, you will notice that it's not some weird kind of pattern, but it's different sized pins. If you follow the tip of my tweezer, you might be able to see that there are two bigger ones surrounded by a full set of small ones. And that's like in the entire area right here, which could indicate that those bigger ones in the center could be data pins surrounded by ground for shielding maybe, could be DDR5 or PCI Express 5 related. Okay, it's finally time to do the actual deleting. I got everything ready. The Dele Dimate is prepared with a temperature probe on the top left. I just squeezed it inside the screw here to be able to check the temperature while we will delete the CPU. Reason for that is, as I said before, we estimate that the CPU is soldered, but we want to make it a little bit easier for the deleting process and yeah, just to prevent damaging anything. That's why we will put the CPU in there and then heat up everything with the heat gun to about 170 degrees Celsius, then use the slider to push onto the CPU. Hopefully everything will work out. Okay, so SMD components are facing downwards. This is our slider. Those are the two contact pads to push the IHS. We will put some tension onto the deliter before we start heating it up, simply to make it a little bit easier once the heat is actually applied, because then parts of the glue should already be loose, should make the deleting process easier. Time to make good use of the Corsair gloves again. Yep, that sounded perfect. Oops. Okay, just had to take it apart before it starts to cool off. Otherwise the indium will solder our IHS again to the die. The delete was absolutely successful and we can get a first look inside the 12900K. Before we will do the fully detailed analysis, we will clean the CPU PCB and also the IHS from the bottom from the glue residues which is sticking together, the heat spreader and the CPU itself. First impression, I mean obviously we have solder confirmed as the thermal interface material of the CPU. Another interesting detail is the gold plating inside the heat spreader. And that's a detail we've seen in previous generations already, but the position of the gold plating is somehow strange. It's not centered, it's like somehow to the bottom right, not sure if that's some kind of manufacturing mistake or whatever, but certainly interesting. Otherwise, looking at the CPU on the bottom left and top right, we have some very, very, very tiny SMD caps. Yeah, if you rip them off, good luck soldering them back on by hand. A perfect tool for glue removal is a PCB of a 10900K. But no worries, the CPU is already dead, so it doesn't matter. We have some mental support from Sheik for our deleting analysis. You can see she's very, very excited. Yeah, she just fell asleep. Anyway, the reviewing kit of this generation of Intel, the 12900K, looks very nice. They included, for example, this like huge die shot thing and also, for example, a display which you can hang on your wall. So you can see there are some changes going on inside Intel, which you can see in the result of those tiny accessories they're including with their CPU. So they're trying a bit more than they used to in the past, which is something I think is quite nice. Let's check out our images from the deleting and do some comparisons to 10th, 11th and 12th generation. 
On this image, you can see the chip on the left and the heat spreader on the right. If we take a closer look on the bottom left part of the chip, there are those tiny SMDs located. And those are 0402 SMDs with a height of about 0.18 millimeter. They are very tiny, could be very fragile, but they are not in a bad position when it comes to the deleting process and they are also not in a way for potential direct die cooling because they are very, very low. Moving on to those 1005 SMDs and especially this tiny cap on the side and that's the only 1005 SMD part that could be a potential issue for direct die cooling because it, it has a height of 0.46 millimeters. That's exactly the same of the die. We will get to the die height and everything later, but I can already spoiler that this is exactly the same. Also interesting about uh, this image is the fact that you can see the PCB quite in detail from the side and you can probably try to count the layers inside the PCB. Looking at the PCB I counted about eight layers inside plus the layer on top and bottom so we have potentially like 10 maybe 11 12 layers something like this inside the substrate itself of the CPU and considering that the PCB is about one millimeter thick that's quite a lot. We're going back to the contact pads again quickly that's what we highlighted already earlier but that's a macro shot so you can or you should be able to see it even better especially the ones on the right the ones which are a bit tinier than the rest and they're surrounded by something I cannot really tell what it is but they're making contact to surrounding pads it looks like they're directly contacted next to each other. I'm still trying to find out what the reason for this is and what they're doing. So far I didn't get any information from Intel obviously but I'm trying to get some information from third parties and if I get any details I will let you know. We're now switching to the comparison of 10th to 12th gen CPUs. First of all with the substrate comparison as I said before 10th and 11th generation had 375 times 375 millimeter PCBs and the 12900K is just slightly larger with 45 millimeter PCB in height. Now if we compare the die sizes of the individual CPUs we can see that the 12900K has a slightly larger die than the 10900K with about 208 square millimeters. I think Intel stated it's about 209. I measured, so I guess 209 would technically be correct. And uh, after measuring 208 should be very much in line and it's pretty identical or slightly bigger than the 10900K. And it also shows how big the 11900K was, especially considering this was the peak of 14 nanometer manufacturing. We can see that there's definitely a benefit from switching 14 nanometer to Intel 7 aka 10 nanometer on the 12900K. The last thing to compare is the die height of the individual CPUs and especially if you remember the step from 9900K to 10900K, the 9900K had a very thick die and we had pretty much terrible temperatures on the 9900K. Switching back to 10900K they thinned the die which led to better thermals on 10900K and now if you take a look at this image you will see that 10900K and 11900K basically had the same die height. I almost did an oopsie but she demanded cuddles so all right. I guess a 10900K can be a nice pillow. The 12900K features about 22% thinner die according to my measurements than 11900K or 10900K. And the die height of about 0.46 millimeters should be identical to for example 6700K and 7700K back then Skylake architecture. And especially once you deleted and applied liquid metal the thermal performance was really good. So I have hope that 12900K will feature better temperatures than what we saw in the past, especially considering that Intel also announced that the S-TIM, the solder thickness of the indium layer, will be thinner on this generation than what we've seen previously. In conclusion, deleting of 12900K is pretty easy and I guess the risk involved is not really high. If you have something like this, then it should be very simple because there are no components in the way. If you do it correctly, you could damage unlike 11900K, the risk there was extremely high and I guess 90% of the CPUs could potentially be damaged deleting the 11900K. So deleting itself should not be an issue. I don't think it will be necessary to do it because 
it's a very thin dye, we probably will see the thinner S tim as they already announced. So I guess in this regard, it shouldn't be necessary thermally to delete the CPU. If you want to do it, you could probably do it in an easy way. Direct dye should be rather complicated. Thinking about this single SMD cap, which is probably in the way, because as I said before, it's the identical height than the die. And usually if there are some components in the way, you could try to isolate them, put some, I don't know, captain tape on top, for example, but you should avoid that because if you increase the height, then your cooler will not sit flat on the die anymore, could potentially harm the temperature results again. We will test that probably and see if that makes any sense or not, but more about that in about a week. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.